So I've done a lot of episodes on analysing the mental health and personality traits um, within Laurie and Chad. Um, and I've done episodes where I talk about uh, specific things, but I've never done an episode where I talk about the case in general, and this is that. And after seeing the two preliminary hearings and listening to the tape recordings of Laurie uh, and Laurie and Chad, um, I have a much clearer picture of what's going on in this case. And it's clear to me that religion never really had anything to do with this case whatsoever. Religion was just the facade that Laurie and Chad used to commit all of their crimes and to excuse themselves for committing all of their crimes. So it was evil doings, evil deeds encased in um, doing religious good. But I'm not sure now, as a matter of fact, I'm pretty certain that there was nothing to do, um, this case has nothing to do with religion in the righteous sense of the word. Chad and Laurie, didn't do anything to help anyone but themselves. And this case is all about money. Now, I, I'm i not enlightening anyone by saying this case is all about money. I think we could all see that this case was about money from um, a long time ago. But now that these preliminary hearings have happened, it's very clear that both Laurie and Chad... Um, conspired to commit these crimes um, and that um, it was all about um, self-gain. It was all about gratification. And, you know, there's very few accidental deaths in this. There's very few deaths that happened in, in natural circumstances. I actually believe that Laurie... Um, is responsible for the death of her husband. And I'm not talking about Charles Vallow. I'm talking about Tylee's father. I think his name is Joseph Ryan. I believe that when Alex tasered him, that was the first attempt on his life. And I believe that um, he either died as a result of the stress of that incident or Laurie made sure that he was finished off the second time on the second attempt. So I don't believe that he um, he just died of mysterious circumstances or he just died because he was unwell. I believe that his death is di directly linked to Laurie. Um, I am totally disgusted, totally disgusted with both Laurie and Chad. And um, Chad's attorney just repulses me i think he's arrogant narcissistic i think he's a bully i think you know just he is so full of himself it's not even funny how full of himself he is he's completely arrogant and um the way he spoke to melanie the way he asked questions with this kind of snarkiness about him he just you know i can't really see myself looking at him um, day in, day out in a trial and listening to him because he just really gets on my nerves, to be honest with you. Um, I've met a lot of narcissistic and egotistical people, but he beats them. He beats them all. I mean, he really is just so full of himself. Um, so I think that Chad has met his match. It's just that um, Chad's attorney is a, a very overt in his narcissism. Um, and I could actually do an episode solely on him. I don't like him. I think he asked questions that were irrelevant a lot of the times. I do think he asked some pertinent questions. I think he asked some good questions. I think he he did at times um, ask questions that highlighted the police, um, the police and their incompetence um, with this case. But some of the questions that he asked Melanie um, Gibb, like, did she entirely get along? I, I thought that was completely irrelevant. Um, some people have talked about Chad and his grinning and smirking in, in court. Um, the truth of the matter is that Chad was very uncomfortable throughout the entire hearing. Yes, he did smirk at times. Yes, he did smile at times. 
But just because someone's smirking or smiling doesn't mean that that he was enjoying the process. It was a very uncomfortable process for him. Um, and, you know, smiles can cover up what people are really feeling inside. So I wouldn't put too much into, in, I wouldn't put too much weight into the fact that he was smiling or smirking. Um, people could be smiling on the surface and crying inside. Um, trust me, he did not want to be there. He did not want to be there at all. Um, when his attorney said that the charges should be dismissed, I suppose he was doing his job, but two dead bodies were found in his backyard. So for him to stand up and say that charges should be dismissed really disgusts me and turns my stomach completely. Um, And it just, you know, I already don't think very favourably of him. So the fact that he could say that, the fact that he could defend somebody like Chad Daybell, who's a complete sociopath, and who is completely guilty of these murders, um, along with Laurie, just makes me extremely angry. Um, Now, I want to say something about Melanie Gibb, because a lot of people don't like her and have it in for her. Uh, Some people even think that she's involved in the murders. I don't believe that Melanie Gibb has anything to do with the murder of Tylee and JJ. Do I think that she did the right thing all the time? No, I don't. I think she could have done some things better. Um, I think that she could have um, spoken up about uh, you know a lot sooner. But I don't believe that she had anything to do with the murder of Tylee and JJ. Um, and the truth of the matter is, she's not going to be charged with the murder of Tylee and JJ. Um, as it stands, and I hope that the charges will be upgraded. But as as I record this, they still have not been charged with murder. Laurie and Chad have not been charged with murder. By the time I publish this, they might have been. They might be charged with murder. But, um, you know, I'm not holding my breath because it's been about, it's been several weeks now since those bodies were found. And the fact that they haven't been charged with murder to me is is mind-boggling. I don't understand it. And quite frankly, I don't want to understand it. Um, They should have been charged with murder um, a long time ago. Now, someone said to me that it's very difficult to get a murder conviction and um, everyone wants these people to be charged with murder, but um, it's very difficult to get a murder conviction. Well, I'm sorry, but If bodies are found of two children in your backyard, two children that you've been avoiding and evading questions about, if you have that kind of evidence in a case and it's going to be difficult to get a murder conviction, then there's something extremely wrong. Um, It's very obvious what's going on here. It's very obvious that Laurie and Chad conspired to commit these crimes and that they were trying to evade responsibility. After the welfare check, they fled to Hawaii. They didn't want to answer questions. And then when you hear them, um, you hear Laurie lying on the body cam footage, you hear her lying to Melanie, um, saying that JJ is fine and well, saying that Tylee is fine and well, saying that she's the victim, she's a good person, she's the victim, she's raised her kids well, She's done everything right. She's she's done nothing wrong. Um, and everyone is after her. Kay is after her. Someone's trying to kill her. Uh, she's the victim. Me, 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 me. Um, you know, she's such a manipulator, that Laurie Vallow. And she's actually worse than I originally thought. I knew she was bad. And, I, and I've said so. Um, I think she's a narcissist and a sociopath. And I've said so. Um but she's actually even worse. I mean, when it comes to um, the lowest of the low, Laurie Vallow is in that category. I think Chad is a complete sociopath, but I actually think Laurie is worse. I think that when you look at when you look at the whole um, spectrum of this crime, if you look at you look at the totality of this crime. Most of the victims in this crime were actually connected to Laurie and not Chad. 
Tammy Daybell is the only known victim connected to Chad. Um, Charles Ballow, Tylee and JJ are all connected to Laurie. So most of the victims that we know of, and I can only say that we know of, are connected to Laurie. And also there's Joseph Ryan and there's also Alex Cox, who may or may not have been one of their victims. Um, most of the victims in this case are tied to Laurie. And I believe that Laurie is the mastermind. Um, Chad is a sociopath and he's a narcissist, and there's no question about that. But Laurie Vallow is a very dangerous person. They're both dangerous, but Laurie is the mo more dangerous of the two. Um, they're both extremely, extremely manipulative, both extremely diabolical. Um, they both lie excessively. And when I hear the recordings in court of those two lying their faces off, it really, really is disturbing to hear them lying about JJ. It really is disturbing to, to hear Laurie trashing her family, saying that her family are, are conspiring against her with Kay and that Kay's threatening her. You know, her family went on television, did an interview defending her, and here she is trashing her family saying that her family is conspiring to do away with her, along with Kay, and the police are conspiring against her, and she's just doing the best thing she can for her children. You know, the level of manipulation in this woman is just beyond. It, it really, really turns my stomach how, how, how evil these people are. I mean, both her and Chad. But like I said, I think Laurie is even more manipulative. I think she's even more dangerous um, because her husband died. You know, the, the, the one that she was married to, Tylee's father, he died before the other victims. So she had a death in her life under suspicious circumstances before, before Chad did. Now, I don't know if there are other victims out there. Um, I think it's very possible that there are other victims out there because I think that, um, I think Chad is a very dangerous person as well. Um, and who knows how many dead bodies there are that we don't know about. Um, this is a wicked attraction case. And this is a case about greed and money, greed and money and the root of all evil. Um, that's where it starts. It's all about gaining. It's all about getting. It's all about gratification. It's all about gaining money um, to do what they wanted to do and discarding everybody else that was going to get in their way. Um, I'm actually truly, truly, truly disgusted with the pair of them. I really am. I really am disgusted listening to Laurie lying through her teeth. It just boggles my mind. It boggles my mind how a mother could do this, could betray her children like this. And, and so, someone who um, was loved by her husband, who's loved and defended by her family, how she could accuse her family of conspiring with Kay, um, to to um to destroy her how she she could accuse other people of trying to get her life insurance when she was the one after the life insurance um you know it's this case is is not about religion there's nothing good about about Laurie and Chad there's nothing righteous about them there's nothing moral about them they're both morally bankrupt people who are after money and they wanted to get rid of anyone who was going to get in their way of getting money and gaining and gratification. That's what it was about. It was never, ever, ever anything to do with religion. Religion was the fake facade that they use as a cover up to do their criminal activities. That's all I have to say for now.